Hello, I'm Dan McDowell, longtime professional broadcaster. Why subscribe to our Patreon podcast? Well, perhaps you support our struggle to get out from under the oppressive thumb of the man. Or objectively, if you sign up at patreon.com slash the dumb zone, you'll get the two episodes per week that are available on all podcast platforms like this one, plus an additional two episodes each week that are exclusive to Patreon. So subscribing on Patreon gets you four episodes per week. Oh my, what a bargain. Now, on to today's program. The Dumb Zone. The dumb zone, dumb zone. How does Baylor get out-rebounded by Yale? Hmm. How's that happen? Are you directing that towards anyone? The gentleman who just talked about getting yeah, out-rebounded. He, he had the stat sheet. Tori? Uh, Tori? He said, how do... They yeah. have, they have mean, more you, rebounds You, you said he got out-rebounded. I was surprised. You did. 36-32. How so, does Yale out-rebound Baylor? Um... You go up and grab the ball off the rim when it comes off, and then you grab it with two hands, and you come down with it, and that's considered a rebound. So they got more of those than we did. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Recording this live to tape on a Monday at 12.16 in the p.m., the 25th of March. It's show number 138 of the Dumb Zone. I'm Dan McDowell. Hello. Now you guys do your thing. You say yeah, I'm... That, the dog got it out of there last time. Oh, okay. I was like, why is he... Anyways. What is it, a sandwich? Trying to hide your food? I'm Jake. I'm Blake? Is that what we're doing? I don't know. <laughs> we have a full house today. The house being high atop my garage. The room above my garage. Some might call it a man cave. Ooh. I would not do that. Some neon signs, a couple jerseys. I'll call it the den. You lost your war on man cave. What do you mean? Just that I know you've always thought that term was really I hate it. ridiculous. Yeah. Keep that bitch out of here. <laughs> um, <sighs> did you win your football game yesterday? No game. Your little football game? By week. Two weeks off to rest and recover with Easter next week. Oh. No, Dan, I was at Legoland yesterday. Uh, at the Grapevine Mall? Yeah. Okay. Got to tell you. Pretty impressive. Sure. Pretty impressive. They have a little. Uh, they have a little room you can go into that um, is just like things from the Metroplex. So they've got Victory Plaza. They've got the Death Star. The Leaning Tower. They did not have the Leaning Tower or the Wrecking Ball, but it's awesome. The Grapevine 911 Memorial did not have that. Did have uh, the Gaylord and uh, Great Wolf Lodge. They do have Dirk. They have yeah. a, like a life-size Dirk out of Legos, and it's incredible. I got a picture of it. Um, but the things you'll notice when you go there... It's on interesting a, to take a picture. What are you going to do? My wife made me, actually. Like, you're going to sit at home and, and, then I took, and gaze and then I, at it? Then I took one... Well, it was me and my daughter. And then I took one with just Dirk. So I could show you guys or something if I wanted to. But okay. um, you go to a place like that on Sunday... That is Divorce Dad Central, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. The ratio is off. Big <laughs> big time. So you weren't scouting out? It wasn't partly milfy? No, but there's just a lot of dudes in there with a kid. And you can check for the wedding ring. And it's, you know, you, some guys just don't like us. But most people do. So a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, this is my last few hours with the kid before I have to drop him off to mom and his new dad. <laughs> Yeah. I saw Marion Barber the third jersey, Blake. Really? Yeah. I don't know why that made me think on a, of you. On a dad or yeah. a kid? No, it was on a it was on a dad. <laughs> but he didn't look like old. He was probably early thirties. Still. Just paying paying his respects. <laughs> okay. The M B three. Deceased, yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing I thought about. He used to put it on on a Sunday. Yeah, that's right. Get you his, know? Just yeah. get twenty percent off. Albertson. Yeah. He went yeah. <laughs> The other thing I thought about that made me think of Dan is just 
think of the germ factor. At Legoland? Yeah, because, I mean, they've got the cool models and stuff, but they also have 10 different stations where kids just stop and build stuff. Yeah. And there's how can they sanitize? There's, I think the world of kids is just, you can't worry about is. the germ factor. Yeah, I was going to ask. Did like it, the ball pit. <clears throat> yeah. Did it stress you out, or did you just not even worry about it? No, I think I've changed over the years. You used to be less of a germaphobe? Yeah, I mean, just think about... You know the the squalor we all lived in in college or something. Yeah, like I could not go back. No, of course not. Um, you know, just think of where you, just different places you would put your wiener. Am I right? <laughs> different stuff you put up the nose. <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever the the case may be. D- yeah, different things you would ingest. Like uh, here, from, try from, this. From oh. some, you bought it from some guy okay. whose car is barely running. Sure, no, I'll like, I'll see what it does. <laughs> yeah. Like now you'd be like, oh, let me oh do man, some this stuff doesn't work. Research this stuff doesn't first. work. I'll take more. That is the good thing about the whole if things get legalized, right? At least you know. It's what I've always thought about, you know, people railing against regulation. Like I feel like regulation keeps things safe. Like go across the border to get your Medicine? No, you don't want to do that. I want it to be regulated. I, I want it to be of people who do that though tested. Go get a, go get a surgery. Yeah, well, he's going to town over there. Butt surgery. All right, he stopped. The dogs. Something. Something. <laughs> uh, so we have some extra voices here as well. It's a full house. We have um, Matt. Hello, hello. 690 Matt is what we're calling him. He's uh, here for a 690 sit-in. Now, did you split that with Ben? I sure did, or yeah. Did you, uh, okay, so now no. Ben is getting the short end of the stick because he's back behind the couch. Yeah, I mean, we said, uh, so it's our birthdays this month. And so we said, hey, we're turning 41. It's our dark birthday. Let's so, treat ourselves. So let's nice. uh, go have these on uh, 690. Nice. Do a visit to the den. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I get the couch, and he has to sit over there. You're you're a little bit of a bigger guy, so he <laughs> yeah, he yeah. acquiesced. He's he danced like I don't want to break. Do you know my what chairs. happened? Do you know what happened to A and M last night? I don't. As uh, we have a fan in the house, I fell asleep, or I would just turn. I it off. voted, so don't <laughs> shut up. <laughs> they were uh, they were down to Houston. Ben is uh, decked out in Aggie yeah. gear. In fact, yeah, hand Ben that, uh, Mike, just for a second. I want to say for... also, I think Ben is probably on my top ten Aggie name list. Yeah. You do look like you're ready to go to a tailgate right Kyle. now. <laughs> it's way below Kyle, but this it's definitely on the good. list. Um, they're down 81-69 with a minute and a half left to like the number one team in the country, at least the number one seat, Houston. Four, of, uh, five of, four out of five of Houston's starters had fouled out, and they still were just – beating up on him. And uh, they tied the game, A&M did, before his overtime with a one second left on the clock three. Wow. Yeah. They made it up that quick. And then they lost in overtime. And oh. it was a crazy overtime. Wait, 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 wait. But you would have had a lot of momentum heading yeah. into overtime. <laughs> I figure you yeah. Can. Carry that right over. Yeah, it was, it, like, they had they won, they would have – Alabama or uh, Houston would have said – uh, we couldn't stop the momentum. What What were you going to do against that? Momentum? They were hard charging in the yeah. final minute thirty. No, they lost because I turned it back on. I'd already turned it <laughs> off. Oh, is that that's how it works, right? I yeah. love that guy. The universe could feel that. Yeah. But anyways, it's it's a tough tough night for Aggie that in no way made my morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry. I'm glad uh, uh, I'm glad you guys are here. Happy birthday, right? Yeah, Can happy birthday that? month. Happy yeah. birthday, guys. <laughs> happy birthday month. It's a whole month long celebration. A whole month. Um Did you do like a bit when you were forty? The whole Lordy Lordy look who's forty <laughs> sign in your yard you know and all that? Or? You know what I did when I was forty? We went and played pickleball. <laughs> oh okay. I know. You gave us money, yeah. so I will <laughs> hold my tongue even though I already took a shot at the Aggie. <laughs> hey, I would say him too, but <laughs> He actually graduated, though. So, um, also sitting in, we have uh, Benton. Benton, what's up, fellas? Is part of Dumb Zone lore. 
forever engraved in our history. And his uh, his bestie Clay is here as well, also known as Corn. Corn. Yeah. Okay. Corn Smith. <laughs> you guys really are like besties. You said you've known each other since you were four. Yeah, just about. Which uh, is very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> He's using that in place of another word that he wants to use. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think it's gay at all. I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. Now, Benson, uh, we need to talk about just your role in our history. So Benson is the guy, and you might have heard a mention of this on the Lawyer Roundtable. If you haven't listened to the Lawyer Roundtable, go back to, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. Blake? Yeah, sounds right. Our Epi's from two weeks ago where we described the whole scene uh, when we got sued by a large corporation and lived to tell about it. But during that lawsuit, or it was the very end, right, Jake? Was it the hearing yeah. day? Uh, no, yeah. no, no, no. We did the hearing. It was the end of mediation. Then there was more mediation, and then we were ending it like, yes, we have a settlement, and the judge announced something to the courtroom. Yeah, she said we've had uh, we've already had multiple requests for the transcript uh, of these proceedings. And I'm like, what does that mean? But she acted like that was not a common occurrence. No, like she, no, I think they she, were taken aback by. It was kind of like the OJ trial. It was very. It was very much like that. the <gasps> media was descending upon. Yeah, I think I feel like she might have told us back in the meeting room and then in front of the whole court. I can't recall, but definitely there were the other side. So- the other side. <laughs> Uh, they seemed kind of like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what are you, like, well, who, and I, then it started to like dawn on me, like, if that is something that is possible to be purchased, a hundred percent somebody was going to do it. Not to take away from Benton's role, but somebody was going to do that. But it was a high dollar purchase, right? They seem to indicate this, or at least our lawyers are whispering to us, like, man, this is, that's like $2 a page or whatever. It's, that's probably a thousand bucks or more. Yeah. It, it meant a lot to me, though, to get it. Okay. I, I, it meant it a lot cost? to me to get it. It was about 1700 bucks. Damn. Um, it would have been less if I... It would have been less if uh, if it took longer to get. But like you I, waited? I, well, no. I If you had waited? I actually reached out to the court reporter by email um, while the hearing... I think while the hearing was still going on. Oh, okay. I This, this case excited me to... You're a lawyer no, too, and right? I'm an attorney, and yeah. I do a lot of litigation that's kind of in y'all's realm. Um, y'all have been, or I've been huge fans of y'all's for, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. So I knew that I wanted to get this transcript. That's and why, why did you have to get it immediately? Because I was going to post it up on the internet. Because so <laughs> you just knew people wanted to. <laughs> I wanted all the tea, man. I wanted all the tea. Wanted to know what, what was going on. That was yeah. a wild night when it first popped, too. Like, it felt like uh, somebody dropped, like, this weekend when <laughs> Future and Metro put out an yeah. album at midnight, and you're like, I got to stay up all night <laughs> listening to this. People are just going through it, posting their parts. That was a... Uh, <laughs> And I, I remember reading through it like uh, just a couple pages and being like, "All right, now nah, I can't do this again, <laughs> not again." Yeah. Now I enjoyed the excerpts that people would, yeah, would yeah. find and sure <laughs> put out there. It was a lot of fun. I was just amazed that somebody actually transcribes that whole thing. AI is coming for that person's job. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I. You seem like you're ready to jump in. Don't don't be shy. I loved reading it. I think it, I think every one of your fans loved reading it too. What we, were you thinking of the whole case as it was unfolding? Were you following it? Yes, uh, I followed it very very closely. Um, and there's a a free service called I, I forget what it's called, but you can subscribe to the filings to where you get a notice whenever a filing comes up. So as soon as it would come up, I would read it. And so like a Sunday evening Pacer? filing or something, or well it. it it comes through Pacer. Okay. Um, I just heard that word a lot. Yeah. During you that ultimately, time. You ultimately purchase it through Pacer, which okay. is a federal court filing system, but um, there's a free service that'll just let you know there is a new filing. Okay. Okay. Matt, you're not an attorney? I am definitely not an attorney. No. no. What, what's what's your bit? If you didn't make it through A&M, I don't know. If you <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm an internal <laughs> auditor for a, uh, for a big bank. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> That sounds like business. It's, it's really boring. There's a lot of uh, business terms and circling back. and mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Getting bandwidth. You we know all about that. We'll double click on that. A lot of circling yeah. back. Put it in the parking lot <laughs> for later. Yep. So I like that one. Um, my weekend check would just be that I started watching the Three Body Problem on Netflix. I've heard good things. Yeah, Game of Thrones dudes, right? Uh, I don't know. Is that who produced it? Yeah, Benioff and Weiss, I'm pretty sure. Okay, one of the guys, um, I can't remember Game of Thrones names and stuff, but one of the guys was a main player on Game of Thrones. One of the main characters on this. Yeah, he was... Uh, I Yeah, I know, I see who you're talking about, but I don't... Chubby guy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so I'm watching it with my wife, who has never read The Three-Body Problem... The uh, trilogy I have, if you take a look over on the bookshelf, you'll see the three-body problem on there. I love it. It's a uh, sci-fi, and it's like the most realistic. It's a very realistic sci-fi uh, book series. And the uh, my wife has one problem. Her problem, she has a one-body problem. <laughs> And it is that the lead scientist, the main character in this, is one of the hottest women you will ever see. Uh, she's a former model. She's a uh, actress, I think, of uh, she's some kind of a Hispanic actress. I don't know. The point is, she is so smoking hot. It is entirely unbelievable that she is like one of the uh, leading scientists in. Yeah, unbelievable as a scientist. I will give you that, but this one too thin. Uh, one. yes, I think it is that. Take the, a look. The smoking hot in the bikini is a scientist. I'm looking at it right, Eliza Gonzalez. Yes, yeah. and then too I thin. guess her big complaint too is that not only is she smoking hot, but then she has all of the top of the line like uh, outfits, like uh, whatever the highest dollar outfit, and it's always matched correct. Like she's like, well, if she was indeed this scientist then she wouldn't have that part of her life together. She wouldn't care about that. She hmm. would just be devoted to whatever, blah, blah, blah. Women. Women's women. biggest enemy. Women are women's biggest enemy. I got a, pro- a problem for uh, Blake on Shogun because I started that. You, okay, I want to get into that You're past too. me, but okay. No, I'm only like two in. <clears throat> okay. The problem I have, and this is minutia, it's mostly in Japanese and subtitled, which I appreciate. It really bothered me that when they remade or when they made The Looming Tower – into a Hulu or FX series that uh, all of Al Qaeda spoke English with like an Arab accent. <laughs> okay, so you like it better when they do way better. Okay. The problem is there's this whole situation with like Portugal and Japan, and it's I think mo- mostly a true story, at least based on loosely based on history. There are a couple of people there who speak Portuguese, except the people who speak Portuguese. When they say they're, they're speaking Portuguese to each other, they speak English. So you've got... It's very confusing to me. So you've got 70% of the show that is in Japanese and subtitled, but then it'll switch to English, which actually represents them speaking Portuguese. I'm like, it's, look, it's, we're already doing it. It's, <laughs> like, we're already doing the... the Jap- Japanese is a very... For- like, I don't right. understand Portuguese, but Japanese is a much more foreign language if you're an American audience. Mm, yeah, you know, even though it's not Spanish, you could kind of maybe pick some stuff. Like, up, would you want to watch a show that was all? Well, I guess you, we, I w- we did. Uh, I wouldn't. I we did uh, Squid Games. But there's no no English in Squid Games. I don't recall. I don't believe so. No, you could choose. How you to could watch choose, it. but yeah, I don't, you're right. I, I don't no, think we you're did right. though. Yeah. yeah, we watched all subtitles. Okay, yeah. So who cares what language it is if it's all subtitles? I feel like y- you got to either do one or the other. Yeah. Because it's confusing to me. They're like, uh, she's like, I know Portuguese. <laughs> and <laughs> they're saying it in English. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good show, though. It is good. I, I like it. That, that is one I will at least attempt to finish. So could this be a show that we watch as a trio? Finally. We've come upon a show. I don't, know how po- get into I, it. I don't know how popular it is, but I yeah. It's... Pop, it's on the top of my Hulu. You know what would be really funny is if uh, after years of uh, act, asking Blake to book guests from our favorite shows, he books someone from Shogun who speaks no English. Yeah. <laughs> Have well, that guy on. Wouldn't be the first time I booked a non-English speaking guest. That's true. <laughs> Although we did get invited to their wedding, so I feel like it turned Damn. out okay. That's actually my biggest regret of leaving the ticket. 
That we didn't go to that wedding? Yeah, because we would have been at training camp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The guy who ran onto the field and proposed to his wife at, or fiance at Dodger Stadium. And then got trucked. Tr- trucked by <laughs> security. <laughs> there is one guy or somebody I would like you to book for something that we'll watch. Okay. Uh, Blake. Who we got? This uh, show will be on ESPN, and it will premiere on April 25th. <laughs> at the Dallas International Film Festival. It is a 30 for 30 documentary called Dude Perfect, A Very Long Shot. Oh, yeah. Mm. So they went from Magic and Bird and Mario Andretti, you know, Michael Jordan, college basketball matchups of uh, of all time Bo Jackson Bo Jackson the Patriots dynasty right you know Marcus Dupree. they've been building up to get They're to... giving a 30 for 30 to Dude Perfect That's right With Tyler Cody and Corey That's right Tyler yeah. Cody Corey <laughs> Caleb I want oh, to forget yeah we're, we might offend these guys again I want oh, yeah. <laughs> They are they are Aggie uh, greats I got a 14 year old, but when he was six, seven years old, I mean, that was right. That was life to him. Yeah, that's we used to watch them all, and I didn't uh, hate it. I mean, uh, it was fun. It's all right. You know, a little, uh, little softball stereotypes or a little basketball. No, like, stop. Pick up basketball that stereotypes. Stuff, that or? stuff sucked then, and it sucks now. Oh, man. <laughs> the problem is you can't always control. Like my daughter came home from staying the night at grandma's this weekend and was like, "Grandma and I watched Taylor Swift's movie," and I was like. What the hell? <laughs> what is that? Oh, yeah. Dude. And she was like a concert movie, but I've tried so hard to keep Taylor Swift out of her life and out of our home. Grandparents are unhinged. It's, they it's don't insane. care at like all. Like, my, my daughter will come home and be like, what's TikTok? What's yeah, Facebook? Oh, and I'm like, I don't know. It's like, uh, <laughs> hey, I, we got to stay up till 11. Here's we a got book. To... You're going to bed at 6. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, grandparents F everything up, man. <laughs> Brooks has started reading that Dude Perfect book you got him. Oh. Okay, nice. Not nice. Whoa, what do you mean? Because <laughs> he'll just come up at Dad, I want to read Dude Perfect. And then now, next, I, now next he has to think a, about Dude Perfect. No, I just got to read their dumb little book. Now he's back there jumping off the trampoline trying to... Tyler shoots from half court. And he one. makes it. <laughs> oh, no way. Dad, I want to vape. <laughs> That'll be the next that book time. should be a thousand pages long because they have to list all the times they missed. <laughs> Tyler misses. Tyler, Tyler misses. misses. Tyler, Tyler misses. misses. Tyler, Tyler misses. misses. But keeps his head up and keeps trying. Tyler misses. Uh, you guys are giving jealousy. Ooh. Uh, I just, I hate everything. Do Anything? you think they would like him if they weren't Aggies? Yeah, I would. It would not matter to me. I just think that, oh, I hate over laughter like that. <laughs> well, it's nowhere near the over laughter of his favorite show. Boy, they've been getting pimped hard during the tourney. That's the only time of the year I, f- I remember they well, yeah, they're, exist. They're carrying true Because they're TV. on the same TV network. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Watch us sell in. <laughs> Kevin Harlan. Impractical you Jokers. You won't believe it. Um, you got anything from the weekend, Blake, before we move on? Uh, no, not really. Just played a little softball yesterday. The Indians swept. Nice. So got back in the win column. but Oh, I forgot you changed your team. And you got Chief Wahoo on your hat, game. right? Yeah. 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 Did you mash? Uh, not really. Come on. I only hit one out. No. Not going deep these days. Power? Would we <coughs> yeah, shift I'm, into contact? I'm a uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm struggling a little bit at the Ooh. plate. But we're okay. Do we have to send you down. May. Yeah, may have to get in the cages. Where are you at in the lineup these days? Uh, two hole. Yeah, I mean, still. they're gonna let him ride through I mean, this thing. They're gonna let me figure it out. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, a little housekeeping, I guess. So this week we will be going to our possibly future studio tomorrow, right? Doing yep. a studio show. Yeah. We are scheduled to do a show from the ballpark for opening day, but I don't know, I guess there's a... A little problem with as far as can we get into the parking lots early enough? Yeah, and we're we're working on it. The Rangers are opening their lots at one, and I mean, if you guys want to start the show late, we can. That would just yeah, mean but uh, the show wouldn't get out till after five, maybe six, and then yeah. So I that feels a bit late for a 
Yeah, my instant reaction was no. Our we Rangers can't. preview. We can't, <laughs> but, I mean, if you guys want to, we will. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, what if we'll, we live stream it? Can we do that? Can we live stream audio? Can yeah. we have an app by Thursday? <laughs> well, I don't think we need an app. Let's oh. circle back. Yeah, we're Let's not go gonna. to the parking lot for now. <laughs> and then uh, we'll we'll have another uh, Den Six Ninety show on Friday, I believe. Um, we also need an eclipse location. We want to live stream the eclipse on April eighth. So I did see there is a at least a minute and a half difference if we were to do this downtown Dallas or downtown Fort Worth. Like, Dallas gets more of the eclipse, if you care. But I guess we have to decide how to do it. Let me stop you there. I don't. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So you don't even want to be a part of this at all. No, I'll I'll come and do my job. I feel like a live stream, though, would be a cool bit. Sure. Like a short, should we just live stream it? Should we, like, record our show like usual and then break away for live stream? Or should we live stream a whole show that day on YouTube? Yeah, what say you? I don't. I have no opinion on the matter. I just. Mm. It seems kind of weird. Like, aren't people going to be outside just looking around at the eclipse and not like at their phone? Yeah, but for the future, you're going to want to have a it's live. Kind of like a cowboy uh, playoff game. Yeah. We got eight thousand people watch that night, and then another like, you know, sixteen thousand or whatever watched later in the week. So, cowboy playoff games about as rare as a total eclipse. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So, yeah. On, uh, <laughs> we think around 1.40 on yeah. April 8th, we will be live streaming. Where? I don't know. Hey, it could be your place of business. <laughs> <laughs> In the As path of totality. You could, you yeah, you could have own, uh, own that part of us. And then I know that uh, Raymond has been reaching out to us about stuff, and I might have even missed it. Like they had a big pre-sale thing going on for the got too much stuff. during the lawyers roundtable, but uh, we we don't plug E6 Sportswear very often, but it's in our it's on the Patreon link, so link in bio. Am I right? <laughs> totally. Is it? Are they still doing link in bio? I saw one the other day. It was like sex in bio. Like you have you guys haven't been getting porn bot responses, where it's like a. Some graphic L, graphic I, graphic N. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. It's just porn bots. It's, and then it says link in bio spaced out. I saw one the other day that just said sex in bio. Well, like, well get your attention. Yeah. I get a lot of pe- porn people, like, they'll like something you had on there three years ago. Yeah, what's yeah. the deal with that? I don't know. I what's the deal with porn bots? I think she just really likes you. <sighs> it could be that. All right, um, shall we move on and like do some sports or something, or sure. some uh, viewer mail? Or it's up to you. From what do you say, Matt? Oh yeah, let's do some viewer mail. <laughs> oh, I'm oh. just kidding. Sports. Everybody's a he PD. Hit the, he hit the sports bed. What do you guys want to do first? I see Tyron Smith is a Jet. You said he was going to have a press conference. Was there anything there? No, it was pretty uneventful. I mean, he's Tyron Smith. Yeah. When you said you were going to go over that audio, I didn't think there's going to be a lot. I kind of knew that going in. Um, I have a bunch of tournament stuff, but maybe the lead one is Kim Mulkey, if you want to start there. It's up to you. Yeah, the whole Kim Mulkey thing is very... Uh, I couldn't hold it in, and I talked to you about it a little bit yesterday. Like, <laughs> uh, I keep looking at the Washington Post trying to find the story. I know. So now I have two stories that I've ever read in the Washington Post. <laughs> or <laughs> I would want that to be my second but it's not out yet. So this all started, I think, when someone named Pat Ford. Pat Ford tweets, hearing some buzz about a big Washington Post story in the works on LSU women's hopes, uh, women's hoops coach Kim Mulkey. Yeah. It was, I, 40? I think Ben says yeah. 40. Yeah. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I've heard the name, but I don't know. Who is it? He's a Yahoo guy. Okay. Yahoo reporter. He's very good. At least he was with Yahoo. Uh, big story on uh, Kim Mulkey potentially next week. Wagons being circled, etc. So that was what started all of this, I believe. Yeah. 
And then I think you kind of heard nothing. Like, I wouldn't have known about that. Had that been the last? Like, I didn't hear it that day. I heard that as I researched this little. I saw it. The audio. Okay. Well, and then she opens up her press conference. So I had the whole press conference pulled up. And what you need to know is, so they had some players, and then they have just uh, a time of nothing. There's like a guy up there. He's probably the press guy or something. He's just having fun with reporters. But the mics were off. So then, you know, she walks in, and right away she starts talking, but the mics are off. So they weren't, like, fast enough for her. But she was giving her... She started on her spiel, and you'll hear the mics kind of fade, or uh, yeah, fade up. Do we fade down or fade up? We fade up. Fade in. Fade in. Whatever. The point is, so here is Kim Mulkey, formerly the Baylor coach, and also former, formerly Kim Mulkey Robertson. Yeah. Yeah. She's a little spitfire. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Don't you look at her and think of that? I look at her and think uh, of her as the final boss of uh, Angry Suburban Mom. Okay. Definitely could be named Karen. Oh. Like you, you, I kind of think this too, because I think at times my wife can be a Karen. Oh, mine's in uh, like undergrad for Karen Tree. But I love it. <laughs> like, don't you kind of need no. a Karen on your side sometimes? I don't love it. I feel like I, I feel I, awkward every time that she's like, can we move this table over there? And I'm like, they're going to say yes, but it's a beating. We don't but have then, to do it. But then it can gets you, done. Can you lower the temperature like at a restaurant? Oh, man. So I'm I'm feeling the exact <laughs> same thing. Like, but like <laughs> the thing is, though, if I need. And then they do it. Then they do it. And then she's like, see, they didn't even care. But you, like, live, yeah, but you have to live through those moments to get the times when you do want some action taken, but you won't do it. <laughs> yeah. And then you can all, you know, she will spring into action. That's like, true. Hey, uh, you know, I don't want to do this, but um, and then she will. You know, I don't want to complain about the uh, the portion sizes here, but she will. Yeah. So it's great. <laughs> anyway, I'm feeling what you're uh, putting down as well. Anyway, so uh, here is Kim Mulkey. The uh, we're going to fade in, I believe, but it's not my fault. It's theirs. and the lengths he has gone to try and put a hit piece together. So she started with this reporter from the Washington... So she had already been oh, yeah. yapping about it. Uh, has been preparing this for several years. That's interesting. This reporter has been working on a story about me for two years. After two years of trying to get me to sit with him for an interview, he contacts LSU on Tuesday as we were getting ready for the first round game of this tournament with more than a dozen questions, demanding a response by Thursday, right before we're scheduled to tip off. Are you kidding me? This was a ridiculous deadline that LSU and I could not possibly meet, and the reporter knew it. Want to stop there? Like, do you want to stop a hundred times during this? Yeah, I mean, it's obvious. The guy's been trying to contact her for two years. <laughs> like, I wouldn't have said that if I want to. If I wanted to play the victim, which she is here. Yeah, I would. I would not say that. Leave that part out and say he called me. Just they. Thursday. They contacted us Thursday or Tuesday, and they needed the answers by Thursday. Yeah, but <laughs> she kind of <laughs> gave up the ghost there already. Yeah, like, um, excuse. So you say. For two years, how did you know you've had a chance to talk to him? Uh, Had you said yes one of those times, you would have had plenty of time to answer these questions. Like way more, way more than Tuesday to Thursdays. So she clearly knows who it is. Hundreds of them. He's been trying to contact her for comment, and finally, like he's got his story ready now, and it's like, hey, let's. uh, Here, here's the questions I need. The story's coming out next week, and. Yes, I guess you'll hear more of what she says will indicate that she got a feel for what the, the story is going to be about. It was just an attempt to yep. prevent me from commenting and an attempt. Again, 
It was not an attempt. Like, you were not trying to prevent you from commenting. Prevent me from commenting in an attempt to distract us from this tournament. <laughs> it ain't going to work, buddy. <laughs> I think that's probably more that's a speech that you want your, your players your players to have heard yeah. because I'm not sure that the guy really like, is. Like, LSU basketball, what I'm, is he? I'm hoping that I distract these girls because I got a lot of money on yeah. the team they're playing. And, and like, he wants uh, – they blew the doors off somewhat. Well, I guess it was kind of close yesterday for a little bit. I was only paying attention because I wanted her to lose the week that this story came out. Um, but also, they want you to comment – like yeah. the, the reporter needs you to. He was trying for two years. Well, she didn't even give a. Uh, I've declined to comment on the story type thing. Maybe she did. When the story comes out, we'll see that. But he's trying because he would like to have your comment. Unfortunately, this is part of a pattern that goes back years. I told this reporter two years ago that I didn't appreciate the hit job he wrote on Brian Kelly. And that's why I wasn't going to do an interview with him. Uh, the extent of the hit job on Brian Kelly was, boy, Brian Kelly sure is making a lot of money at LSU and hasn't won much. Okay. Which is uh, not really a hit piece. He didn't. They didn't, you know, <laughs> he was just like, hey, was this worth it? Is Brian Kelly really worth it? And she's like, a hit piece. You know college coaches <laughs> are used to they they take it super well. They're used to, and they're, you know, a lot of those, most of the people they deal with, not all, because these are national programs, and clearly now, once you're in the tournament, you're dealing with more national people, but most of the time, they're dealing with actual students mm -hmm. who went, go to LSU, or local people who went to LSU, or, you know, at Baylor, same thing. Mm-hmm. And that's why you can easily bully them or kind of just use them as a PR mouthpiece. Like, oh, here's why we're not winning a lot. Oh, okay. Let's just print that. Like, that's, you, they don't, they won't really look into you too hardcore. After that, the reporter called two former college coaches of mine and left multiple messages that he was with me in Baton Rouge to get them to call him back trying to trick these coaches into believing that I was working with the Washington Post on a story. When my former coaches spoke to him and found out that I wasn't talking with the reporter, they were just distraught. And they felt completely misled. That's terrible. Former <laughs> players have told me that the Washington Post has contacted them and offered to let them be anonymous in a story if they'll say negative things about me. The Washington Post has called former disgruntled players to get negative quotes to include in their story. They're ignoring the 40 plus years of positive stories that, <laughs> that people or they have heard from people about me. I mean, the guy rushed for over 2,000 yards. He was an announcer on Monday Night Football. <laughs> Hall of Fame. You know, really broke some barriers. Hertz commercials. Yeah. Very marketable. And now you're ignoring you all of that. just keep bringing up this damn murder. But you see, reporters who give a megaphone. A megaphone. To a one-sided, embellished version of things aren't trying to tell the truth. Can I stop you right here real quick? Knowing where she leans politically and not like in a moderate way the second i saw that that pat 40 tweet i knew she was going to do this i knew it i'm all, the only surprise here is that she hasn't said washington compost <laughs> like she might have to retire to run with trump because they'd be <laughs> the perfect pairing and they would crush like you knew at some point she was going to do like the fake news type thing right if you know anything about her. The thing is, though, the story isn't out yet. Ah, that detail. But she already knows that it's a uh, hit piece that's uh, one-sided, and it's, uh, you know. I mean, if the reporter actually said, hey, I'm here with her, that's a little bit tricky. But I promise you that they didn't say, we'll offer you anonymity if you say bad things. They just said, hey, if you want to talk about your coach. You can do it uh, anonymously. 
Yeah. But you see, reporters who give a megaphone, <laughs> megaphone. to a one-sided, <laughs> embellished version. Again, a one-sided, embellished version. We asked for your side. <laughs> of things aren't trying to tell the truth. They're trying to sell newspapers and feed the clip machine. The what machine? Uh, I think the clip machine, yeah. <laughs> They're trying to sell newspapers and feed the clip machine. Oh, no, <laughs> click. It was actually click. So, yeah. Uh, all right, yeah. One-sided version, all this. this Although, I got to say this. Nothing that the reporter did could have fed the click machine like this. Oh, yeah. She's doing, just carrying the water for him. I would have zero idea about all of this. And right, when's the last time I called you on a Sunday and it's like, man, I can't wait for the uh, woman's basketball story to come out this week? <laughs> like, I would have no idea. I, I, I wouldn't care. Even if the, the story came out, I probably wouldn't care. But if she did this, yeah. if she is this against it, I got to see what it says. This is exactly why people don't trust journalists uh, and the there media we anymore. There we go. It's these kinds of sleazy tactics <laughs> and hatchet jobs that people are just tired of. I almost think the reason in sports media that I don't trust sports media sometimes is that they're all so just, again, a PR voice for whatever team they're covering sometimes and i kind of don't trust that or an agent yeah or you, yeah. yeah they're just what'd you say carrying the water yeah. she, did she you know somebody's carrying the water for i probably so use that so. term incorrectly she's just giving them free advertising but yeah i know what you're talking about but yeah so in that way i don't trust you know some sports reporters because i just don't know what you know who actually is giving the you know the information and actually wants it out there i'm fed up <laughs> <laughs> i'm fed up and i'm not going to let the washington post attack this university mm. this awesome team of young women i have don't think they're going to do or that or me without a fight well, it's probably just you. I've hired the best defamation law firm in the country. And I will sue the Washington Post if they publish a false story about me. Okay, now that's a bold statement because now if you don't sue, yeah, we have to assume that it's a true story. Yeah, and also um, I was talking to TC about this yesterday. Obviously, there's like the you have to prove malice right for defamation but her attorneys aren't going to tell her but you know you're a public figure and it's pretty hard for you to sue a publication you're gonna lose they're just gonna be like let's go yeah kim and they're just clocking her and they should because she's behaving like a child when was this was this after a game yeah uh, oh, pre. maybe pre. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, okay. the game was the, game, the next day. Yeah. Okay. I would have loved it. This was after round one. Not many people are in a position. Although she did have time to prepare this big statement and get all worked up about it, but not time to answer twelve questions in an email. <laughs> yeah. Not many people are in a position to hold these kind of journalists accountable, but I am, and I'll do it. Ooh. That's all I'm going to say about this right now. And now I'm going to get back to talking about my basketball team and winning this game tomorrow. Now we got media guy. All right, Coach, thank you very much. As you all know, you've been here regularly. Coach Mulkey usually does not make opening statements, so that's all on that topic. If you have questions about LSU's game yesterday and the win over Rice or the game tomorrow at 2 o'clock against Middle Tennessee, we will open up the floor to questions for Coach Mulkey. Please introduce yourself and your affiliation. And with that, we'll open up the floor. Did you speed that up? <laughs> no. Yep. Coach, Matthew Bernie on three. Um, obviously, Middle Tennessee is shooting and they're, they're – Oh, you pussy. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> the redirect back to basketball. <laughs> Middle Tennessee State. I probably would have done the same thing if I needed to keep a gig, but he had a real shot there. Yeah. Somebody would have uh, would have admired his moxie. 
So every coach, what do you think is in the story that would be so damning for you? And then he right. just runs out. Or, you know, <laughs> like let's take some notes. Your credentials are worthless at that point. <laughs> take some notes during that and say, okay, I mean, you said they didn't give you a chance to respond, but you had uh, he was trying to contact you for two years. They probably would have killed his mic instantly. She sounded, she sounded very Bill Clinton at the end. Hold on. Hold on a second. How about that? Go ahead. She sounded very Bill Clinton at the end of that statement. Now I need to get back to the American people. Right. Yeah, very yeah, much. No, that's, yeah, that's in the playbook, to right? From, from um, what's important. Yeah. So yeah, Good every call. every question because I listened to them all. They were all <laughs> basketball. They were all you know you said uh, so and so so and so, uh, and we got to one more. We have time for one more. If there is one for Coach. Just a softball here. Is there anything you want people to know about your relationship? So first of all, yes. Come on, uh, young reporter. It's like if Don't you were uh, let's say this like is if you softball. Were, if you, and then if you were about to uh, make love to a woman and you were like, "Listen, I know it's small, but can we still <laughs> <laughs> can we still do this." Softball here. Is there anything like, yeah. you want people to know about your relationship with your players? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now respect to her for that. Because now we had done nothing but ten minutes or however many of uh, yeah. of just basketball questions. Just a softball here. Is there anything you want people to know about your relationship with your players? Huh? <laughs> In regards to your opening statement, is there? Oh, anything and I told you I wasn't going to talk about that again. Anything about? See, <laughs> that's the whole thing. You were. This is not reporter, media person. You know, you. If you are dictating what is being told, this is not a press conference. Yeah. It's a PR event. If I told you we weren't going to talk about that, then it's like, oh, okay, I guess we're not going to talk about it because you told us. Like, I'm, I'm a reporter with a microphone here. That again. Anything about your current relationship with your players? You better ask them. I think they love me. <laughs> Coach, thank you very good. much. Yeah, I'll be Once again, LSU and Middle Tennessee tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Coach, We're you got that? Excited. You were up late, right? You heard the yeah. time? All right. 2 o'clock tomorrow uh, here in Baton Rouge. We'll be back at 2.15. We'll have players from Middle Tennessee join us then. I uh, can't wait. <laughs> what a tease. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is going to be big for the for the post for sure. It's not out yet? No, I, don't, I mean, I looked this morning, obviously, but. Yeah, and I know the um, ESPN or somebody reached out to him, and he just said he confirmed he was working on the story, and said I declined to comment on anything else. Okay. Yeah, is that what is her play? Because okay, this was a hundred percent wrong, I think. Yeah. But you said it sounds like the big man, so maybe it's right. Everything we think he does is it works. It does end up working. It works, but I mean, you certainly I don't have know. your fan base that's going to support you no matter what. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I saw somebody make this comparison. Um, it worked for a long time for Bob Knight, like where he would just make every story completely about him, and he had enough people that were like, "Yeah, but he gets results. The way he does things works." So, who's to say? Well, that was also men's basketball, and they were winning national championships, which makes a ton, ton, ton of money. It does. Does she carry that same? No, not the same, but, you know, it's it's becoming bigger business. Side note on women's college basketball, they talk way more trash than the men. Way You've been more. watching? No, I see clips, like, on Twitter. Mm. Did you see Caitlin Clark's dad? Yeah. And then they, like, had to – he's asking to get her tossed, and she's, like, yelling. And then the, there's a, a – uh, a woman from Stanford, very attractive woman, who when she fouled out last night was walking off the court and just went "fuck you" to the ref. Wow! And it got you could see it. People thought she was talking to the other bench, but the ref walks into the frame right when she's walking off. Like they mix it up, dude. Way more. Okay. It seems like with the men, there's like this respect almost. You very rarely see heavy trash talking, I feel like, in men's basketball. You see more in the NBA. But the women, I don't know, must have all cycled up for March. You yeah, know I mean? yeah. I mean, they're all together, <laughs> right? <laughs> that all happens. They're on the same schedule. I have a couple of quick hits uh, for you here before uh, I get into the rest of my college stuff, although that doesn't flow quite as well. Uh, Shohei Otani is going to speak today. Yeah, I kind of excited about that as well. A little bit. 
Because I think there's something really nefarious here. But I also think that Major League Baseball, like they can't, if he was betting on baseball. They can't let that get out. They can't ban Shohei Otani for life, can they? No. Because Pete Rose was a, he was a manager at that point. He was not well liked in the game. You know, so that it seems like a ba- a bad like it was a lot easier to to ban Pete Rose from baseball. Yeah, he's poster than boy. The current face of Major League Baseball, and on, in, on two hemispheres. <laughs> yeah, there's never been someone as popular like worldwide. Like baseball can't believe they have a LeBron. Yeah, like they're all all their big stars. People just don't know who they are. They don't advertise. You know, they don't. Uh, We've talked about it before. Like LeBron makes what two hundred, three hundred million a year because of all the, uh, you know, off the floor the, stuff. Yeah, the like Major things. League Baseball, the the guy, you know, Bryce Harper is leading the way with like one million dollars extra endorsements. Like baseball players just are not well known, but Otani is. So a couple questions about today: Who's going to be his interpreter? <laughs> right. I don't think it can be the same guy. Probably not. Probably not. Is he's like Joey's like talking and uh, he's speaking Japanese, and then Ipe's like he says that only Ipe is responsible. <laughs> 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 Every answer. Um, they did ask him that in the ESPN interview, though. What I don't remember if we talked about that last week. They actually asked him, uh, "Have you ever, um, basically?" misconstrued or relayed different information than what Shohei was telling you when we asked questions. Which I've always thought like an interpreter could do that. Yeah. The only problem is there's got to be a million Japanese people watching those interviews who are fans back home who would, one of them would say like, yeah, this interpretation is not right. If it was a consistent thing, yeah. Yeah. But if it was a one-time, one-time thing. Yeah. yeah. So on Ipe, the other thing is uh, over the weekend, The Athletic published a story about him, and it's wild because uh, he's got major resume issues. Um, you know, they put him in the media guide, and they list who he is, and I, he's a he's part of the team staff, um, which listed that he went it to and graduated from UC Riverside in California in 07. Uh, the school has no record of anyone by that name ever attending there, let alone graduating there. Mm. Said he worked for the Yankees for uh, Hideki Akojima. Uh, they say no. Said he worked for the Red Sox uh, in spring training. So was he hired by the Angels? Yeah, that's the first in the... So Shohei you, didn't know him ahead of time. Oh, no, it's his best friend. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Then why would he need all this other crap? I don't know. Why Probably lie? because, uh, you know, if you'd never really worked as an interpreter before. You had to tell the angels I have? Yeah. Okay. And so Shohei's like, hey, I want my guy, and you're not going to say no. Okay. I'm not saying he's never worked as, a, as an interpreter, but you know, you can do like a LexisNexis uh, search for news articles, and this guy was not mentioned once in any news article until Shohei signed with the angels in whatever it was, 2017. Ever. <laughs> So, like, the, the Red Sox came out and were like, he was never a Red Sox employee. If he worked with some of our guys before they got to spring training, perhaps. But, and I almost wonder about stories like this, although I definitely trust the athletic. Um, but if I were uh, Shohei's team, I'd be like, we got to do everything we can to make this guy look, look like an absolute liar. Yeah. But it is, so. Yeah, these are also they're... all facts, yeah. you know? He's in the media guide. None of these uh, former uh, stops seem legit. But also facts. Weren't you saying last week that he initially said yeah. one thing, but now he's saying another thing? And doesn't that kind of lead to this whole thing of just he's a lying degenerate gambler? That kind of feeds into that because a lot of people want to pin this on Shohei. Yeah, and I think the first story was that Shohei knew and paid it off for him because they were yeah. tight. And then the next day, he was like, I stole it from him. He never knew anything about it. ESPN actually caught up with him. I should have pulled the exact conversation. They got they got him on the phone for like a minute this weekend. And uh, they're like, 
uh, why'd your story change again? And he's like, I'm not supposed to, I'm not supposed to talk about that. And is somebody telling you that? No. Are you working with Shohei's lawyers? No. Did Shohei know about it? No. And like, why aren't you talking about it? I'm not supposed to talk about this. It's like, so he did kind of talk about it. Yeah, but also, like, you don't say, I'm not supposed to talk about this if no one else told... That's, like, not the way you phrase that. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, when I saw it quote to you, it was like, does Ipe need a lawyer right now? Because he should not be answering his phone. It's a crazy story. Yeah, I think we'll never know the truth. Probably not. They don't want you to know. Nope. You know how that is, Blake. Um, <laughs> Cover-ups. Maybe we can save my... I'll do some of my college stuff because I want to play this audio, uh, the two pieces of audio we pulled. You know, the most amount of research I did on what I saw in college basketball over the weekend is uh, reading up on Jake from State Farm. Why? The original? (laughs) No, but he ties into this story because as I've told you for many years, they had a viral campaign with a guy named Jake from State Farm, the khakis campaign. It was funny. It went viral. He was kind of a flabby white guy and then they brought the campaign back like five years later with a black guy who's ripped to the gills (laughs) like he's it's a really but they still call him jake from state farm it's a very weird marketing move it's like if they replaced the gecko and geico with like an alligator and they were like he's the gecko (laughs) but they did redo that uh commercial bit by bit the the khakis one the original one yeah yeah they're like remember this yeah so it wasn't because the the original guy was me too or something? No. In fact, the original guy was an actual employee of State Farm. And, and then, Jake was his actual name. And uh, he is now a bartender in uh, Illinois. Oh, but he wasn't <laughs> oh. photogenic or something? And, I guess not. <laughs> or they need a DEI, right? They need to be inclusive. I mean, he, I, uh, he was on Dan Patrick, actually, Jake from State Farm. And he said he tested well. He was had been in a couple big The original? Bar- no, oh, the okay. new guy. Like he tested well. He'd been in a couple of uh, bit pieces and like network dramas, you know, SWAT and stuff like that. But um, I just wanted to read this statement uh, from, uh, let's see, the chief agency sales and marketing officer of State Farm when they hired New Jake. The simple phrase, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, reflects how State Farm agents and employees make a meaningful difference helping others. Jake from State Farm isn't just an individual. He is all of us. <laughs> he represents what every one of the 19,000 State Farm agents and 58,000 employees strive to deliver. And that, you know what? Every time I see the guy, that's what I, I was like. That's all of us. Yeah, yeah. Not just even at State Farm. How did you find yourself in this? Because it, it, so here's the way it works during the tournament. And I don't know if any you probably have noticed this. If you watch an NFL game. Um, there's way more diversity in advertising. Like you might see an AT and T ad and a Verizon ad. You might see, you know, in the same game, but there's much tighter constrict of ads in the NCAA tournament. Like first of all, there's only AT and T. So you have exclusivity over. There's the title sponsors of the tournament. I don't know if it's title, but certain vehicle, automobile. I'm only pretty one. sure there was only one. One beer, all that. Yeah, and I think there might be. Progressive and Jake from State Farm in this tournament, but there's about six companies advertising. And they have like, usually have like four ads each. But if you watch the tournament, like if you just have it on in the background for the, a whole day, you're going to see the exact same commercials time and time and time again. Like a Rangers broadcast or something. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, because those you, you definitely do. But you kind team. of expect that from local. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's just cable TV. But in national, you know, the biggest tournament in the sport, I mean, I saw a lot of Jake. I saw a lot of Draymond Green in his AT&T commercial. You're going to see a lot of Draymond throughout the next 20 years. Yeah. The the thing on his AT&T commercial, too, is because I was like, man, does AT&T know what they're getting into here? And then the copy started, and it's him talking about um, – Learning from past mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they do know. Yeah, so if he's They're like, you know, if you, if you used to pay too much, you know, maybe that was a questionable decision. You know, that's interesting because Barkley was the same way as a player. Yeah. 
He was the guy. He wasn't a role model. That was his big thing is I'm not a role model. He's throwing people through uh, glass windows and I guess most windows are glass. <laughs> but he's, hey, I didn't catch it right away. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> you know, but he was always getting in trouble, bar fights, this and that. And it is odd how he kind of turned that into being a darling. You know, that's what about Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin, but he, did Michael Irvin really lean into it? No. He does. He will reference it and not hide from it. Yeah. but I guess that's a difference. But they kind of turned it into his thing. I guess they they haven't really done that with... Uh, who's the guy that ate the Skittles? Um, the Seahawk. Oh, Marshawn oh, Lynch? Marshawn Lynch. He, he was... Uh, I guess they did... A little bit with him, but they're kind of like turning Draymond into like, this is my image, and yes. Yeah, and he's like... And I enjoy Draymond. He's pretty good, too. Yeah. Like when he's on broadcast. Yeah, I like him a lot. Do you know what the uh, main storyline out of Grand Canyon v. Alabama was over the weekend? Doesn't it have something to do with like, it's a predatory... Oh, that's a different deal, which I did not know about. Grand Canyon... Grand Canyon, the university, is also apparently like a publicly traded company. Yes, that too. So I was hoping they'd win last night because as someone pointed out, like we're going to find out what a Sweet 16 appearance is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did you, were you thinking about getting in? No. Buying a little stock? No, wetting the beak with that? No, I was not. Um, yeah, they're a publicly traded company. and But then there's something else about just the whole way they're set up. Are they like... University, University of, of Phoenix, Phoenix type thing. Yeah. I know University of Phoenix has caught some heat for the way they do business, for sure. But yeah, Grand Canyon that nobody has ever heard of all of a sudden is <laughs> and is to, on the map because of the tournament. Well, it started a couple weeks ago whenever they were windmill dunking on UTA at the end of a ball game. Ooh, I didn't know about that. You don't go into college hall? <laughs> y'all didn't y'all didn't see this? Uh uh-uh. uh. No. They they'd like tomahawk slammed with four seconds left and UTA got really mad and the kid on UTA chunked the ball at him and hit him like right in the hip. Nothing funnier than two adults, one of them <laughs> hitting the other with a ball. This was nothing funnier. This was in the conference tournaments and yeah, Grand Canyon beat him. Napoleon and, Dynamite. And it was uh, it was just a funny scene at the end of the game watching UTA get really mad about it. But yeah, the kid like chunked a basketball and nailed him. It was like a really impressive throw. Well, what happened over the weekend, Dan, um, was something that was more that people on television were upset with watching. You tell me when you can figure it out. Oh. Oh. Three point edge for Pamela. Do it again. Sorry. It's, it's either a child or hopefully a child. The screaming? Yeah. Then they're way too close to a mic. And it, it went on the entire game. On the post, Greg Kenyon the bounce. Count it for Grant Foster. Uh. Well, it starts with the great hands. Joe Von Blackshaw gets a hand on the... You know Blake is hearing that like, God, soul just, leaving his body. Yes, as an engineer Let's for just life. Isolate it. Get rid of it. <laughs> it might have stopped at some point, but it was definitely going through a good portion of the game. Did you find the video? Yeah, uh, two point nine seconds left. Here, let me yeah, he does a, a windmill dunk. And then number four for UTA sees his teammates get a little they're, angry. They're winning by 10. Gets shoved and then just chunks dodgeball style and hits him right in the hip. <laughs> yeah, one guy. Yeah, those guys should be kind of suspended. I guess it doesn't matter. There's two seconds left in their season, hey, right? see this? But one guy, yeah, hip checks him and then the other guy whips, whips the ball at him. So he dunks it to go up 12 with three seconds left. Checks him and then... Just- <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see here. It was hot gambling talk all weekend, which I think we were kind of in the front of. Are you still on the tournament? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, as ESPN has a, uh, I guess it's called Best Bets segment, which is uh, co-hosted by Reese Davis. And sorry, I'm not trying to be misogynist. I don't know her name, but um, I saw her Rollabob tweet this clip out. This is uh, from ESPN's Best Bets segment. Many different ways you could play a game. You could look at the spread, you could look at player props, the total, but we're going to get, again, a little spicy here. This is going to be a sweat. I wish I could give you a ton of research of why this is going to hit under, but when we look at UConn, they like to slow down the tempo. The same thing goes for Northwestern. If they want to stay in this game, they're going to have to slow down UConn's offense. Okay, so she goes through her reasoning by, hey, you need to take under Northwestern. It was okay. under 60, and then we'll skip ahead. In total, although it seems low at 60 and a half, I'm going to go under there. You know what? Some would call this wagering, gambling. I think the way you've it's sold sweating. this, no, I, I think what it is is risk-free investment. That's the okay. way to look at it. Aaron, a positive, positive right, Aaron, way. Aaron Dolan from ESPN bet with the best. But I feel like it might be illegal to say that. <laughs> I was going to say, why do you think every gambling ad you see has half the page yeah. or half the screen is just fine print of saying like, do not treat this as an investment. Call this if you have a problem in Kentucky, Mississippi. Like, you know when we've done ads for people on the radio about investing. Yeah, no. Like you you're, can't say. No. The scariest ad campaigns I've ever done were ones where they were like, you know, if you mess this up, somebody could get sued. And like he just flat out says it. He says risk-free investment. And this is Reese Davis. In total, although it seems low at 60 and a half, I'm going to go under there. You know what? Some would call this wagering, gambling. I think the way you it's sold sweating. this. No, I, I think what it is is risk-free investment. That's the okay. way to look at it. Aaron, a positive, positive right, way. Aaron Dolan from ESPN. Did that hit? Bet with the best. It did. Okay. <laughs> you know I ran to it. Because it would have been glorious had it not. I know. The first thing I thought was, but apparently she's very good at what she does. It was uh, a 60 and a half over under, and it was, they think it came in at 58. Play the beginning again, because I do love that. We got to get back to uh, uh, the music. Many yeah. different ways you could play a game. You could look at the spread, you could look at player, prop, once you, total, once you but change we're going to get, again, a little spicy here. This is going to be a sweat. <laughs> I wish I could give you... <laughs> you play that when you're getting a little <laughs> spicy here. Uh, and then our final piece, this is something that... Uh, Actually, let me just... You want to do it? No, let oh. me bring something up, and then you can play that. Okay. Because um, I think that's funny. But... Um, well, good. Wasn't it the uh, the thing... Weren't you guys telling me about this guy last week, the guy from Oakland? Yeah. Yes. I don't know if it was on the air or off. Uh, um, it was... It was. I think it was off. His, he had an insane game. Is it Jack Golke? Golke, yeah. Okay, he's the guy. He kind of went viral, too, because after the uh, big upset against uh, Kentucky. Kentucky, he said... You know, they never considered themselves underdogs and the mentality they went into the game with and blah, blah, blah. You know, any certain day we could be, you know, I can play better than the guy across from me. There's, you know, and if we all do that at the same time, then we can have this game where we win this game. And it got, it was, this, that was a, was that the biggest upset? Yeah. Of this whole thing? Just yeah, that, the whole. That's, but that's bigger than Yale Auburn, I think. Just because these are, you know, even there was a quote before about, you know, some of their bulletin board material was these guys will be in the NBA, these guys will be selling insurance or something, mm -hmm. which is, you know, all actually true stuff. <laughs> um, but it was Jack Golke just took a look at his chart shot for the season. Or uh, shot chart. Yes. His shot chart for the season. Better to mess it up that way. <laughs> Is a uh, hot shirt. His shirt shot. <laughs> uh, 347 threes attempted. Like, take a look at it. <laughs> I know. It's so absurd. He had eight two-pointers attempted. <laughs> and you could see the bulk of, like, some of them are right on the rim, so those are layups. Something happened. Fast break, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, there's like one mid-range jumper. <laughs> it's the craziest. And I think there's one just inside I've, the three-point That line. was an accident. But, yes, <laughs> one mid-range jumper it's all the season. craziest thing I've ever seen. That did not go in, of It course. didn't go in? No, somebody found the video of it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, never again. <laughs> yeah, there was a bunch of other stuff uh, with him over the weekend, too. Like, obviously – uh Companies are dipping into NIL during the tournament, like on the fly. 
so he got uh, Buffalo Wild Wings because um, he was a hot story, viral story. But the other one he got was because everyone on Twitter was like, how is Kentucky losing to this uh, this damn accountant? I'm pretty sure like TurboTax or somebody. Okay, that's smart. <laughs> like got him over the weekend. So, one of the something tax related got to him and he filmed a little video. Did you see uh, Caitlin Clark is going to the WNBA? Uh, she is she, is she just like senior? I, I believe she's not a senior. Oh, okay, is that surprising to you? Uh, just because of nil. Yeah, nil, yeah, and they make more now. I man, I'm, I thought she might be able to make more nil. Now, obviously, she could just keep those sponsorships. Yeah, probably. But it feels like I mean I was kind of like a national thing. Whereas if she goes and plays for, you know, whatever, Phoenix? Phoenix. Thank you. The Phoenix. Phoenix. Mercury. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Got it. The upset of the century. <laughs> Brittany Griner. <laughs> That's the only reason, but it still counts. Yeah, I don't Tulsa, know. Tulsa had one. I'm trying to remember. Was it named after like a hurricane or a... a tornado or uh, didn't we think that it was weird that they were naming things after things that would kill many people like the Chicago fire yeah <laughs> uh, do they still have one Dallas Wings I'm trying to go through as many teams as I can I think I've just done it it was a Tulsa shock the Los Angeles Sparks which are now the Dallas Wings <laughs> oh okay the LA Sparks <laughs> yeah Sparks are bad down there Messing around with wires. The Detroit. <laughs> Predatory lending. Team. Yeah. All right. All right. So, yeah, our final piece of audio here before we uh, close up sports for the day. Uh, this is from Tennessee UT the other day. Listener sent this uh, into us, and it is a classic not listening. These are just the mental errors that are killing the Longhorns and allowing Tennessee to benefit and eat off of those miscues. Almost another turnover. Instead, it's going to be a foul on Vescovy. Tyrese Hunter has five giveaways himself of the 12. Well, but also, but it's been Hunter who has five turnovers. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I, but also... <laughs> Don't forget... <laughs> Oh of those miscues. Almost another turnover. Instead, it's going to be a foul on Vescovy. Tyrese Hunter has five giveaways himself of the 12. Well, but also, but it's been Hunter who has five turnovers. That's yeah. five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Not you, even that. You can hear the, the play-by-play guy uh, faintly go, yep. Who has five turnovers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you weren't paying attention to a damn thing I said, were you? <laughs> That's awesome. That was actually sent to us by uh, Robert Barton. So thanks for... Our bar. Thanks for watching that. Uh, how about before we break, let's get this going. Hey, everybody. It's time to answer some of today's viewer mail. All right. Got this one Friday. Not in time for me to read it, though. Uh, because it says, Hi, Dan. Tomorrow, Saturday the 23rd, is my brother Jameson's birthday. Oh. You may know him as our keyboardist. The best. <clears throat> He's the, the most best. fervent DF of them all, and the reason I am a subscriber from Brian Gray. That's James how we can get the subbies up. Get your family your members to yeah. describe. Like, Got, gotta say, Brian... Jameson got the better name. You think? <laughs> that's tough. What if Brian's an Aggie? Nah, yeah, perhaps. That that's on the list. What are your top five Aggie names? Ooh, uh, Kyle, Brian, Drew, Ben, um, and then some form of the dude perfect. Cody, Tyler. Co Cody would be up there because Cody's generational. Like I got guys my age. Aggies were Cody. Did he this scan? Tyler, of course. Tyler's yeah. up there. Yeah. All, those guys, all those guys were in the core with me. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I wish. 
Drew, Drew, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Drew. Drew was in my outfit with me. Yeah. You were actually in the core? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. so, Jake, you and I actually got into a Twitter fight oh, no, years is, ago. There's no doubt. I'll but fight this, them all. No, I'll tell you this. This is how I got so much respect for you because I thought you were just full of shit all the time. You made some claim like, oh, only like 40% of guys go into the military. I was like, no, that's bullshit. So I emailed the core guy. And he's like, yeah, it's like 40%. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, maybe Jake's not full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You see my Aggie jar over there? Oh, it's a... Uh, there's the white. It's in front of the Greg. Do you ever? Like okay, a, so when the videos get published and stuff like that, I know it's tradition, and I know you have the pride for it. But does it make you slightly like? Like I wish this stuff didn't get out to the outside world that doesn't understand it. Like the yell leaders. Are you? Oh, that? I've watched some of them. They're painful to watch. Okay. You know, I'm just glad we're on the same page there. They're yeah. They're 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 hard to watch. <laughs> I'm just glad they weren't doing that when I was there. Okay. I mean the videos part. They're, yeah, they're that's. Still... Yeah, they were doing it. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Others didn't know. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, there's plenty of stuff in everyone's world, all of our worlds. Really, like as long as people outside of this circle don't know about this. Yeah. Hey Dan, can you wish my brother Matthew Ennis happy birthday on Monday, or is it Enos? I think it's Enos. <laughs> His birthday is March 26th, but he's in Germany, and I guess he'll be a day behind listening, so he'll hear the March 25th announcements on the 26th. That's a lot of info. That is a lot of info. I'm sorry. He says, but you know better than I do about how listening in Europe works. From Jason, day one, DF, number 168. Ooh, so close. Uncle Hotmail, it's my Jason Terry birthday Sunday. My wife wouldn't send this because she thinks this podcast is, quote, dumb. And I tell her that's the point. My leaders are Jake's ragdoll cat establishing himself as the alpha of the house. It's kind of already happened. See Jake having to wipe copious amounts of S out of his <laughs> butthole and Amster Dan. Thanks for being the best comedy, sports, recreation, news, history, <laughs> travel podcast on the market. There it is. More Blake. Uh, you were you had me. Yeah, it's good till the end. <laughs> From Will number thirty one thirty three. Uncle Dan, please help me wish a joy X anniversary. What? I think that's how you say uh, happy birthday in French. Okay, it says French accent. I, I don't know if that was a French accent. Joy X. No. Close though. Uh, my good buddy and fellow DF Kent Iverson. Kent Iverson. <laughs> he listens religiously as I do, and I think you guys and thinks you guys are literature as fuck. Can what? be certain shortened to lit AF. <laughs> From Stephen Brunson. P.S. Please thank Jake for meeting up with me to give me masks. His mom made during the Roni. Like first week, my mom was, she like flipped her shop to just make nothing but masks. So she's like, how do I capitalize on this uh, human suffering? It's all free, baby. <laughs> yeah. Didn't sell any of them. And I was meeting people around town. Back when we thought those things mattered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were you wearing a diaper on your face? Yeah, face diaper. <laughs> Uncle Hotmail, my DF husband, Nathan Seipert. Happy oh. birthday. It's his Dirk birthday. Dude. Just like you, you guys. Go. There you go. Having his Dirk birthday. Isn't that sweet? This dude is awesome. Subscriber number 552. <clears throat> he was hoping to be woken up with a Granberry Lake House picnic table, but we'll settle, <laughs> <laughs> we'll settle for a Porcini's table. Oh, jeez. Okay. That ends in an abortion. Where's that? Ooh. That's uh, uh, Patino. Oh. Yeah, Karen Cipher, the Italian restaurant in uh, Kentucky. Yeah, but a marriage comes out of it. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a really a love story. Yeah. Is what it is, Blake. <laughs> His leaders are the Times Square Sabaros <laughs> and not looking into something he has never heard of. From Brienne. What a good email. He's a, he's a big uh, FC Dallas fan, but whenever they were sponsored by Advocare, remember when their jerseys used to say Advocare? He uh, his Twitter handle was FC Pyramid Scheme. 
Ah, yes, I remember when the FC Dallas jerseys had Advocare, because yeah. now they have... You know, they just changed it. Something else on it? I don't know what it is now. I feel like they just changed it. Uncle Hotmail, I'm D1DF number 148 from Denver. My leaders are Jake's squirting fetish, <laughs> Blake's online dating advice, and words with Dan. I'd like a shout-out for my birthday, and if Blake ever nuts up, and decides to join the team on a road trip to Colorado. I'd love to join that remote. Thank you for creating a high-quality comedy podcast. From Billy Cardwell. we got several people offering up. I was going to say. Yeah. You getting those, too? Yeah. I'm getting a lot of people with uh, place, yeah, a place in Colorado, yeah, this yeah. or that. Like, I feel like Colorado might be our second heaviest listening state. Blake, can you confirm or deny that? Uh, I can find out. Certainly. He'll do it. Blake will do it at his leisure. I'm doing it right now. No, that's all right. Okay. Um, because it is time now. It's to, very, uh, it's very. See. See what? Hmm. <laughs> that's why I don't do things during the show. The Dunzo. You're taking Apple's advice on. from Three Six Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Those shout, guys are cool. Shout what out you to thought? Project Pat, by the way. <laughs> oh, they ruled. And dude. their boy computer. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know if you guys did. You remember that? They had it. They had it. They had a, one of my all-time favorite uh, nicknames. Is they had a reality TV show. Oh, yeah. Uh, and their boy, who uh, was the only one who knew how to send emails, they called him Computer. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had a Hotmail yeah, account. Like, oh, that's Computer. <laughs> yeah. that's Anything right. that had to be done online, Computer did. <laughs> You're listening to the dumb zone. What the hell was that, Anthony? <laughs> We've switched positions here. How'd you like that, guys? That's how a break goes. Uh, it's, <laughs> yes. pretty, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> yep. It That's how it works in the biz. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're listening back, it's uh, 30 seconds. But you just experienced seven hours of uh, hanging out here at the den. Uh, we've switched uh, couch positions. Aggie Ben is now on the couch. And, uh, you know, so, but you guys split the 690, you said, right? And the wives are pretty pleased about all that? <laughs> oh, they're, they're, Blake's less got a wire. Blake's got a humming wire today, and it's driving him nuts. It's not making me fired up, but it's driving him more nuts. What's the deal? Anytime I plug in my computer power, I've I think, dealt with this before. I think the power sends a hum somewhere, so I'm trying to like plug it in and then unplug it. But you're trying not to lose power. Yeah, we're be- we're we're dealing with that too. <laughs> I've dealt with so this before. It's, uh, it's very annoying. It's been a fun show for me. <laughs> Do you need my power cord? It's not the cord. I th- I think we're okay now. I think because apparently it doesn't you can, matter. You can charge through the USB C still. You can. They don't tell you that. They don't tell you that. So we're so, doing that. Okay. Well, we have to make a phone call right now. This will be fun. I don't, we don't think they're going to answer, but today is an anniversary. Today is the anniversary of the first time we ever called Quincy Carter cold. <laughs> Quincy Carter, former Cowboy quarterback. You remember him, right? Quincy! The guy who was having trouble with internet and somehow tweeted out his phone number. Yes. It was uh, to get a hold of Dion's son, right? Yeah, he wanted to coach him. Shadour? <coughs> Probably. Who's, oh, really? Who's now a big deal at Colorado. <laughs> okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he accidentally tweeted out his phone number, and we called it, and then he picked up. It was, he was very confused at first. And he was watching that three-hour movie but on then Netflix. we kind of became the Irishman. Yeah, he's yeah. watching. <laughs> <laughs> kind of became friends a little bit. Am 
I done with this sound effect? <laughs> yeah, you're good. Yeah. Got my hopes up yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, it's a new sound effect. We're going to go to voicemail, isn't he? Yeah. Because he doesn't pick up anymore. No. He used to pick up. Uh, he's a big deal now. Well, no, I I just think he hates us. I don't I don't think he hates us. Well, what did I miss? We became some kind of friends when. Why would he hate? We introduced him to Please TJ Miller. Please leave your Miller. message for. Mm-hmm. Quincy. That's true. You did. All right, turn it. Hello, Quincy. Quincy. Hey, it's uh Dan Dan McDowell. Jake Kemp. Hey there. We're Cute uh, car. we're calling you. This is the anniversary of the first time we ever cold called you when you accidentally put your number out on Twitter, and then uh, we called you and you answered, and we had such a great a lot time. of fun. And then the next year we talked to you again and uh, introduced you to T.J. Miller, star of film and uh, television. Mm-hmm. And then you uh, met him, and everything was great. You and probably so remember it. We're just calling to wish you a happy anniversary of the day we first called you. What was it? Three years ago, guys? Four? Four. Time flies, you know. Twenty twenty. Remember With the uh, remember the pandemic, Quincy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> thanks very much. Goodbye. Uh, yeah. Call us back if you want on this number, right, Blake? Yeah. We'll still be here for another hour or so. So uh, give us a call if you can. All right. Thank. Uh, thanks. Love you. Quincy. All right. There he goes. All right. So if we have today in history and news left, can I do one small today in Twitter for you? Is there anything else we have to attend to? I think we're good. I don't know. Okay. Well, I got to play this for you. Okay. Um, this do you is need a- an open. No. Well, yeah, sure. I forgot we had that. <laughs> yeah. Now presents today in Twitter. So I saw. You know, I'm a big stand-up comedy fan, Dan. Saw a couple of great specials over the weekend. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll forward them to you. One was a guy named H Foley. He's like in the Tom Segura, probably Shane universe. Okay. Can't remember the other guy's name, but I'll, I'll get it for you. And then I saw this clip, but I don't know the guy's name because it was transferred over from TikTok and they didn't have the name in it. Uh, but it's just standard dude um, standing in front of, you know, brick wall set, small club. And uh, th- I thought this was one of uh, the better setups and punchlines that I've, I've heard in a long time. Uh, I just found out that I uh, had 27 subscriptions. <laughs> yeah. It's like finding out that you had 27 kids you did not know about. <laughs> yes, Rocket Money. Yes, that was what did it. Yeah, it's like it laid out all my subscriptions for me like a, like a rap sheet of bad decisions. Like that. <laughs> I had two Netflix accounts. Two Netflix accounts. Yeah, I had two Fubo accounts. How, many, how much money do you save? Save me. $700. 700 bucks? Damn, can I hold 20? I only saved me like 300. No, but in all serious, if you guys want to save some money, download Rocket Money. We'll maybe cover the dreams. I almost got a knife from my kitchen when I first saw this. This is a Rocket Money ad that they are passing off as stand up comedy. As the guy's like, I got 27 subscriptions. And then the lady in the crowd goes, Rocket Money. It is uh, appalling to me. Is this guy a real stand up? There's no chance. Because nobody, no real stand up would do that? No. No chance. Okay, I was trying to figure out what's, what are you playing that's <laughs> funny? Like, where's the really funny part? That brands are now like, hey, what do people like? Comedy. We'll set this into comedy. But here's the thing. Kind of genius. Yeah, but it's so obviously terrible and fake. But here's the thing. is uh, One of your faves, Tim Heidecker, uh, some years ago during one of his specials, actually did a bit very similar to this. Yeah, I was doing the 9 to 5 thing for a while. And uh, actually, a little. I was sort of doing the 9 to 5 thing. I was also doing a little uh, day trading. You know about day, you know, day trading? Uh, kind of did that for a little while. I used this E-Trade. Um, <laughs> That's kind of cool. It's an E-Trade. Uh, sort of lets you invest on, at your own pace, I guess. It's uh, kind of cool. I got sort of into it for a while. They let you kind of uh, customize your 
um, the way you want to invest, you know, so you can be get a little risky, you know, uh, or sort of play it safe. It's a whole range. You could you could get analytics and mess around with that. I got to mess around with that for a little bit, but it was, it's a good service, you know. It's easy too. You just go etrade.com, log in, or set up an account, link, link it to your fucking bank account. It's like too easy. And it's funny. It's like. Is there still fucking people on Ameritrade, just like, <laughs> which doesn't have the tools that E-Trade has? It's like, okay. <laughs> it's such a weird bit. Such a so weird bit. So he's doing that on purpose, obviously. Yeah, of course. Like, and he's not paid by them. Does obviously. anything that he do is anything he does serious? Yeah, no. The line, you never know. But yeah, that's what people... I. Once people <laughs> like making fun of Rocket Money for this, you know, like so actually Tim Heidecker came up with a bit that was so absurd that it was a bit, and then you guys just used it. So, are you seeing this because you're comedy guy? And I don't know. I have no idea. Algorithm knows that you're gonna. It's possible. Maybe that's how Rocket Money thought they'd get me. But you know, it is a great service, folks. If you, I was, to... <laughs> I was just actually listening to it. I was like, "Wait, it what? sounds great." <laughs> I, I think I, I. She saved seven hundred dollars. I just, goodness. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a living, breathing version of uh, Wendy. Wendy's is actually very good, but like, let's say, uh, I don't know, uh, Nebraska Furniture Mart tweeting, "Bruh." <laughs> You know, yeah, I just I can't stand it. I can't stand on the the brand side they want to But fellow it's, kids you. It's just more of um I guess it's like product placement in a movie or something where a guy's drinking a coke and you can clearly see it's a coke and they paid to be in that movie. Yeah. But they're just trying to blur you know, with fakes and everything, now you don't know what's what. It's a weird time for me to be saying that the advertising industry might be fake. Right. Uh, <laughs> when, when we, would, <laughs> we <laughs> might welcome that. You know, if Rocket Money wants to call me. <laughs> sure, yeah. All right. Here's Jake with the dumb zone. Although you've always been here, so that's weird to say that. We'll start with... Uh, a little bit of bad news. Uh, this story, I honestly thought it was fake when I first saw it. This happened in Houston. A 59-year-old woman was stabbed. She went to the hospital in critical condition. I have not seen an update on that condition, but she was alive. Uh, the assailants, a 12-year-old and a 7-year-old. Wow. Yeah. They grew up so fast. <laughs> Blink and you'll miss it. <laughs> when I first saw the story, I'm like, oh, what is this? Some, you know, it's just innocent lady. Was it a robbery? And she was innocent, but. Gang initiation? Yeah. Is it? No. I'm oh. just saying that's the things you're thinking about. Apparently, I don't think you're supposed to use the word crazy anymore, but you know how, like, when you were growing up, I feel like everyone I knew had a crazy lady in their neighborhood. Like, lived alone, probably had a lot of cats. <laughs> If you dare step into her yard, she was freaking out. I'll call the cops. Yeah. We used to go in her yard on purpose. Yeah. If, ball, if a ball gets in her yard, oh, yeah. she's kicking it, you know, and she's outside smoking or whatever. I remember the lady that uh, I grew up next to, um, she would walk around in the street, like on the street, up and down, like to go say hi to people with like a full tumbler of wine barefoot, like on concrete. And her yard had stickers, and one time she backed out of her garage with the garage door closed. Just super wheels <laughs> off. And she was kind of kind of out there and sometimes rude, but it never occurred to me to stab her. Yeah. <laughs> ever. So this woman is apparently, uh, you know, she deals with some stuff. So much so that uh, her brother comes by to check on her daily. That's dealing with stuff. Yeah, fragile mental state. He checks on her. In the video, you can see, um, let's see, the neighbor kind of shoved the boys away, like, in, like sort of in front of her house. And then 10 minutes later, they're back. The younger one can be wearing, uh, seen wearing oversized blue gloves and the other black gloves. Like, they even knew. You don't want to leave prints. Yeah, and I don't get blood on me. Yeah. Or you don't want the knife to slay. Were they trying to kill her? I don't know. But if there's something 
really sinister about charging the woman inside her garage and fleeing heartbeats uh, heartbeats later she falls to the ground they leap back on their bikes and roll away <laughs> reminds me of stranger things ah uh, yes the 80s remember what the mall was like back then remember kids riding their bikes oh man blockbuster kids riding their bikes and not getting abducted <laughs> No, they were definitely still getting abduct- abducted. We just called that guy a little bit funny. Yeah. Not a predator. Uh, sad, sad... Oh, you autoplay ad. Sad news uh, regarding the full eclipse. The total solar eclipse. What? The city of Hillsboro was planning to open a new Bucky's location. And it will not be open prior to the eclipse due to construction delays. And you know what it occurred to me? And this is not even like some Blake BS. Couple things. You definitely are gonna have to get gas like early that week and fill up. Just do it. Why? I don't know that it's a Monday, so I don't know how early you can get in. Okay, well, I would say a few days out. I don't know that people from the stories I've been reading and like, you know, Texas consulted with Montana. I don't know that people understand how insane this is going to be in the Metroplex. I was telling you that a year ago. Yeah, I'm just saying now, like, they have figures on it, like, traffic situations. Uh, You know, like I told you, people were having to get out of the car and pee on the freeway in Montana. Maybe we should just do it here, then. I mean, I definitely don't want to go to downtown Dallas. We will be there forever. We've been offered a place, like, parking top of a parking garage in downtown Dallas. That might be cool. (sighs) You better be willing to stay there. We could be bought, right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, certainly we can be bought. I, I suppose the question is That's how, I mean. how much and for what. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is people are going to swarm every Bucky's location in this path. So don't it's, be driving to the eclipse at one thirty, Dude, people are going to be there the two days before. You think? I know. There's going to be camping out? Yeah. Campouts, people who paid for an Airbnb starting well, Saturday. I wonder if it'll be like the fireworks and stuff at Town Square. I wonder if Town Square will be full. In Grapevine? Or in South Lake? South Lake, yeah. yeah. Either, yeah. It will be. Everything will be full. Every single thing except your house will be full. I went to the Grapevine Barbershop Saturday. Mm-hmm. Boy, I hate when I go there and you've been there. Because... Uh, Immediately, they know everything I've. Uh, that I'm a, they're like, how's France? <laughs> they ask, how's Dan? And I said, he's in France. I'm sorry. Like, how, how would how would you guys know that I was in France? Um, but yeah, <laughs> they were they were talking because you know how Victoria is great. She won't really talk to you if you know. She'll talk a little bit at first, but then yep. they're just doing their own show behind you. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about how a place down the street. What was it called? The Vine? Something. They were charging 250 bucks a head to get into their uh, eclipse party. That's not going to be an isolated situation or anything even approaching it. Like they're going to have wine. They're going to have just a big party and all that. And that's when I was thinking we should, you know, what if we charge to go out and broadcast from someone's eclipse location? Eclipse. Eclit. <laughs> Total eclit. eclit. Total eclit. <laughs> Clip machine. <laughs> yeah, I. But to back to my original point, oh. H- Hillsboro's got to be crushed because every people now know about Bucky's. Like if you go, I don't frequent. I don't go. I may never go again. Why? Because you just can't, it, especially it's on like the, the band that you used to know. No, it's it, it's. There's another gas station across the street. Like for the novelty of it, I get it. Yeah, but they don't have Beaver Nuggets. <laughs> yeah. But you can't get they gas there. Seven hundred bathrooms. You can't get gas there in a timely fashion. Most most of the time, they do work pretty fast at the register. But there's going to be a long ass line. So they're a victim of their success. A hundred percent. And actually, sometimes there's not a gas station right nearby because they put it out of business. Yeah, it's become a bit. Just going to Bucky's is a bit. People wear merch. Like you will. Yes. You will stretch your, uh, you know, your gas. Just to get to that next Bucky's. Yeah, and as I've said several times, I don't know why they have so many billboards. Like, if you drive down 35... Because you got to know where to go. 
But I'm telling you, dude, it's every three exits on 35. It's like, no, I know it's still up there. You're like a, a na- nationwide famous brand now. But if you just got on the highway. Well, you'll see another one three, another one three. Like, what other business has ever done that? Well, maybe they bought a tin for Bubba's RVs. <laughs> you ever gone there? No, I see not. that. I have seen the sign though. Heading down to Houston. Yeah, that was when we first decided that we'd never get an RV. Because I actually th- had talked myself into wanting to get an RV because of the Bubba's RV signs, just driving down to Houston, and like, man, we're gonna stop there and we're gonna put a down payment on an RV. Like, I was so excited about getting an RV because that'd be great drive across the country and then everything in it is so tiny and it just thing it seems too much like camping to me <laughs> that's why i was surprised we were even doing this and then you know but it took me you know i don't know half hour 45 minutes walking around with the sales guy to determine i'm not an rv guy but i thought i was because like the even the nicest one and this is uh some time ago and it cost like 250 grand for the nicest RV, yeah, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to be in that one. I wouldn't think you would. So now I know, not RV guy. The last story. Um, <clears throat> apparently, before a Stars game last week, there was a guy out front with a big sign that said, "Literally anybody else, 2024." You know, because both can't find better. Yeah, three hundred thirty million people. We got these two old windbags. Yeah. So the guy who was doing that is a teacher in Birdville ISD, 7th grade. It doesn't say what school. Perhaps he taught at my middle school or teaches there. I don't know. What was your middle school? North Ridge. 35-year-old 7th grade math teacher, Army veteran. And he has literally, don't get to use that word uh, correctly often, uh, too often, literally changed his name to literally anybody else. So he can be on the ballot. He's trying. Okay. Yeah. He's legally changed his name. There's a picture of his driver's license right here. So just like McLovin. Yeah. But it says literally anybody else. Yes. His last name is now Else. <laughs> <laughs> there, He's referred to as Mr. Else throughout the story. Obviously a huge hurdle because he's got to get a petition with over 100,000 signatures from registered voters who did not vote in the primary in either party. Mm. But I feel like... Wait, you get me? I'm one of those. Yeah. Blake? Anybody else? I bet a clean sweep in here. Just did six. Quick canvas. There you go, buddy. And we're close to you. I feel like if this got in front of the right people, he might be able to get on the ballot. And who will it hurt more? That's always the question. Who does Boy, the third-party like candidate I feel like it's a toss-up on this one. Because usually the third-party candidate has at least policies. <laughs> They're like, well, it's kind of a little more like this guy or a little more like that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this guy's just like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> what if he won? If he won Texas? I mean, it wouldn't really matter. Oh, he can only get on the ballot here? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Is it because the Supreme Court said he couldn't be on the ballot in Colorado? Isn't that a story? I'm yeah, just a news guy. I think that uh, there's some news stuff that going came on. and went. Oh. I got hit with uh, the block walkers on Saturday. Speaking of elections, Dan and I are veteran block walkers, so yeah, we walked for <coughs> Scott, Scott Riggs. Riggs. Yeah, and so unsuccessfully we walked. Yeah. And that's a weird gig, too, man. You and don't Mayor know. Mayor Bruh. You never know what. How do we lose to Mayor Bruh? You know how. Business. Yeah. Block walking is really weird because you don't really know what you're getting into door to door. So it could be somebody who's like, I don't vote, get off my porch. It could be somebody who's like, I'm a Republican and you're with a Democrat. So it's really tough sledding at times. And uh, the lady that came, there's a big school board election coming up in in GCISD. uh, GCISD. And as you know, (laughs) we've been in the news a little bit, uh, much like Southlake. Is your school board too woke? 
Uh, vote, it's, it's, vote along this line. Yeah, so the lady came to the door. I didn't. I don't know the names of the people. I just know like who I'm going to vote for sight unseen, given everything that's happened in Grapevine. And uh, she came to the door. Dogs. I was solo with Carter, so like barely opened the door. Dogs freaking out. Carter's like, ah, freaking out. <laughs> and uh, the lady's like, hey, you know, I'm here canvassing for uh, for uh, two spots on the school board. Do you know what's going on with the school board? Uh, I was like, yeah, and, and she's like, uh, well, I'm here to, and I was like, let me stop you. I was like, are you with uh, the people who are the uh, the side that is funded by an extremist right wing Christian cell phone company? And she's like, no, we're with the others. And I was like, you don't have to say anything else. I was like, you're good. And she kind of just stood there, like, hmm. I don't Mark know me she, down for my. I don't, I don't know if she gets like a ton of those. Like she didn't have to go through. She had like a whole spiel. Yeah. She got like, support right away. Yeah, I was like, you don't have to. No, we'll be there. Just, just no. I know what Patriot Mobile is. I know uh, how things have gone on the school board recently. And she's like, okay. And I just kind of shut the door. It's <laughs> like, like, did she want to perform or did she want to get a guarantee that she's got two votes? Just move on. I cut her off right at the pass. So, yeah. I'm surprised, though, you even answered the door. But I guess if the dog's going nuts. Dog's going nuts. And you got a big window. Front window is open. What am I going to sit there and be like, it's Tennessee, (laughs) Texas. Yeah. This this one's close. Because that's something that I can employ my wife. Because she likes to be, she doesn't like to be mean, but she's more comfortable with it than me. Because I'll buy your magazine. (laughs) What am I going to do with 40 (laughs) subscriptions to Vibe? I mean, I'll I'll just buy one, but then I'll... But if I send her, Blake got that. You've you've converted to Jehovah's Witness six times. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, I want to hear you out. Like the other day, some guy said something to me like, "Hey, do you have a?" Uh, it was a tree cutter guy. And man, I do have a tree that I need cut down. Cut down. Cut it's, down. Uh, it's the worst possible thing. There's I just, one. Sometimes very... I just stare at it in my backyard. Like we're really gonna cut this down. Okay, but that's not a yeah. That's that's a bad one. Yeah, because that's a vibrant. That's a very healthy tree. Yeah, we're putting, that you're just going to uh, put a kill. bullet. Its head. <laughs> but I've got a lot of dead trees. Uh, one in particular that just two weeks ago or a week ago lost a giant branch. All of a sudden, it's just in the middle of our yard. Like, oh no! And then last night, it's very windy, and we were outside walking the dogs. Uh, through the front yard, and you could just hear it creaking. Like, mm. I'm like, I can hear it cracking. And she's like, Well, we got to wait until we can tell what other things we want done. I'm like, I think we got to call now. I think we need to get, like, that's going to fall on our house. And uh, one, some guy came by the other day. She wasn't home and said, Yeah, I'm a tree cutter, you know. And I'm like, Well, you know, I don't know. I, my wife does have somebody lined up, but like, why did oh. I? Why did I encourage the conversation? Like, no sooner had I started talking did I, than I realized he's like, "Well, can I come back later? Can I come back at this time? Will she be home at five o'clock?" And I'm like, "Oh, why did I do this?" And then I had to say that uh, she was out of town. That's a smooth <laughs> play. Yep. I turned to a lie. Eternal book club, which I don't want to do. All right, there's your news. All right. The Dumb, dumb Zone, zone news. news. Like and subscribe. Bop, 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 bop. The Dumb Zone presents... We'll do a couple birthdays. We'll get out of here. History. We got a big meeting. We got a business meeting. As we will do. As a small business owner... <laughs> It's Monday, March 25th, recording live to tape. Here in the den. Uh, let's see. How do you guys like it so far? You seem nonplussed. That means, like, not impressed, right? No, I don't think it does. I think it means uh, the opposite of what you think it means. I've learned this recently. So it means it's you think it's good. Filled with bewilderment. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's part of it. Doesn't that's a very annoying term. Bewilderment? No, non plus. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm non plus. Yeah, that that <laughs> seems like I'm not impressed. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, on this day in nineteen eleven, hundred and forty six people 
were killed when fire broke out at the Triangle Shirt Waste Company in New York. This tragedy led to better workplace safety laws. Overregulated. <laughs> Despite the fact that after the fire broke out and the 146 people died, uh, some local shock jock said, yeah, but they were just... <laughs> no. Shirt workers. Young female immigrants, <laughs> which they were. Shirt workers. <laughs> On this day in 1985, young Dan remembers this. You guys probably do not. An Illinois judge ruled that state and city laws which banned night baseball at Wrigley Field were constitutional. Now, I did not remember this. It says here, the Cubs in the 1984 NLCS, that's the team where the Rick Sutcliffe trade happened, uh, Rick Sutcliffe for Mel Hall and Joe Carter. Hmm. Rick Sutcliffe would go on to go 16-1 after being traded in uh, June and win the Cy Young Award. Unprecedented. Yeah, Blake. Unprecedented to win a Cy Young (laughs) after going 16-1 in one league. So he was already like... So he was traded in June. And he won the Cy Young in the NL. And he won 16 games after the trade? Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Thank you, man. I'm trying to get it going. I mean, starters don't win 16 games in a whole season anymore. It's draft night. It is. The baseball team that I own. Got to get back to the World Series. (laughs) Been there twice in a row. Weird setup. Anyway, so during the (laughs) NLCS, it says here the Cubs were forced to give up a home game because the networks needed night baseball. And in fact, they were threatened that they would have to play future postseason games at a different stadium because laws banned night baseball at Wrigley Field because that's the way God intended baseball to be played at Wrigley Field. So then they the probably Cub- in the next year or two changed it because of money? Yeah, the, they eventually did change it, uh, obviously, pretty soon after that. But the Cubs sued the city to overturn the laws, and the judge ruled that the city wins this round. And on this day in 2005, Brad Pitt, well, actually Jennifer Aniston filed for divorce from Brad Pitt after four years of marriage. We know her as Alex Levy on The Morning Show. What a character. A strong woman. Strong character to, for our daughters to look up to. Did you and pick, did you pick j- up what a great show. Did you pick up that uh, don't really hear from her family anymore? They were kind of a big deal in the first season, and then we kind of forget she has a husband and a kid. Or it was an ex-husband, ex-husband, yeah. Ex-husband and a kid. Yeah, she doesn't seem to be you the greatest mom. This? They're just breaking down news, <laughs> It is interesting. News, you guys would love it. News girls. You guys would love it. Uh, today's birthdays include Avery Johnson. He's 59. Got you may remember finals. him from Avery Johnson Nissan. <laughs> what did... Uh, I do. What did he say? Shazam? Did he do an ad read for Shazam? He did, and it's glorious. Let's see if I can pull it up while Dan's still grooving. Jeff Kunkel is 62. Isn't he our guy? Didn't we have Jeff Kunkel on or no? We had... Jeff Fry. Was it Jeff Fry? Yeah. Darn it. Kunkel died, right? Yeah. Jeff Kunkel's not alive? Right. I think he died last summer. Oh, no. He had Alzheimer's at the age of 62? We're not talking about the mayor. <laughs> I want to be clear. They keep saying the mayor, the mayor. No, we're, oh, the chief. The chief. Yeah, no, no, we're talking about former Ranger Jeff oh, Kunkel. Yeah. Oh. Oh, talking about the oh you're talking oh, about yeah. the number one cop. Right. Yeah. It's <laughs> like. <laughs> All right, he's a Jeff Kunkel, <laughs> former Ranger, alive and well. Uh, yeah. Against Ryan Nemhard for his third personal. Two up, two up. Two up. Two up. Avery, I'm going to have you read this poem. One word can change everything. Shazam! <laughs> the fury of the gods. Now playing only in theater. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant by the play-by-play. Oh, yeah. Perfect setup. Play-by-play lady guy. Uh, Danica Patrick is 42. 
Go to GoDaddy.com to I will see click. more. I have absolutely <laughs> clicked it. You know I did. Jerry. And I don't even think she's hot. Do you ever see her naked? No. One one Super Bowl though, it'll uh it'll come around. Yeah, the company that can actually make her do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a feat. Vladimir Klitschko is forty eight. AK forty seven. Speaking of our kind of had a clit based uh episode <laughs> today, haven't we? Did I get that right? No, that's not right, is it? Kirilenko. That's Kalishnikov. AK-47. Still works. No, we're talking about three different things. This guy's a okay. fighter, right? Yes. You're talking Utah about Andre Jazz. Kirilenko, nicknamed AK-47. Yeah. I thought that was the name of the guy uh, who uh, invented the AK-47, but that's Kalishnikov. Uh, yeah, Klitschko is like a boxer or something. I wouldn't know. And him really, from... his name has Clit in it. That's why I'm reading right. it. So who cares? Yeah, so it's... Uh, Gene Shallot is 98. Former, uh, or I guess maybe current film critic? Big mustache guy? That guy? Oh, yeah. Today I, Show? Yeah. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Gloria Steinem is 90. Very strong woman, so you probably don't like her. <laughs> but uh, I think she wrote the uh, legendary article, If Men Could Menstruate. You ever read that, Blake? What do you think? I think he should. He's just trying super hard. He's like, Maybe this will help. <laughs> I read that because I took a class in college called Women's Studies. And in Women's Studies... So I was thinking about the difference of now, growing up now and then. In Women's Studies, I think I might have told you this before, but one day we had a guest speaker... Much like you guys will guest speak for various like college classes, right? Mm-hmm. But we had a guest speaker, <laughs> and uh, it was a girl, maybe a woman. Well, she was my age ish, so okay. you know, eighteen to twenty-one or something. Uh, so what was her thing though you know if you are a guest speaker well you're host of a uh, podcast or a radio show or you do this or that her thing was she was a lesbian <laughs> <laughs> looking at her like she's a dinosaur and we like, all got to AMA yeah her and it's like well what's it like to you know blah 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 how do you do this and you know I'm thinking of all the scissors stuff but yeah didn't ask that oh but you know then she I, I just remember her saying uh, like I had never met anyone before that identified as a lesbian. This is an age when before Ellen, or maybe it was right around when Ellen is having a kiss on television and it like broke the, if there was an internet, it would have broke, you know? Oh, yeah. Like it was a huge, huge deal. And now it's like a prerequisite. You have to be gay to be on TV and kiss, <laughs> you know, or your grandpa, right? Can't believe the ads that, yeah. the AIDS commercials or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what I just learned? Gloria Steinem uh, was married for some time to a man named David Bale. Uh, married in 2000, died in 2003. That is Christian Bale's father. Christian Bale is uh, her stepson. Wow. That's a good fun fact. Wow. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Uh, Elton John is 77. Some say he's gay. <laughs> he's been on a three-year, four dates in each city each time around, farewell tour. Right, you went to like the first time. Yeah, right? and I was like crying. I was like, man, this is so <laughs> crazy. This piano man. He's back the next year. And literally, he was back the next year. Because you wanted to say, I saw him the last time he was ever at... Uh, yeah, and it was one of the last shows, too. And it was awesome. And then he was at like Globe Life the next mm-hmm. year. And I'm like, okay, this is cheap. But again, the lesbian was like, so... <laughs> that- she goes, I'm... It was the only lesbian I had ever known to meet or whatever. And uh, she's like, but there, there's a lot of us on campus, but, you know, we'll be able to tell. And she was describing gaydar. gaydar. Yeah. But she's like, you know, I'll be walking and just make eye contact with somebody as we're walking through the uh, the square or whatever. And, and she's like, you know, we're out here. <laughs> but it was just a weird, uh, just a different time, Blake. Uh Bonnie Bedelia is 76. That is Holly McLean in Die Hard. Ooh. 
Sarah, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, 59. Man, she always really bothered me. Yeah. <laughs> looks like she could... Why? She, just looks, she looks like she'd be a real difficult person to deal with. And now Dan's going to do the more... <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about her. I'm not going to say anything that you she, were going to say that she looks, she looks like, like she, she could, could live star. across the street here with the. Yeah, I was going to say that she could star in a live action remake of Mr. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> right, but but that's make what, it woke. And that's it's what a lady. you were going to say. Yeah, it's yeah, Mrs. Ma- Ed. That's right, Mrs. Yeah. Ed. Dude, when's the last? <laughs> Blake, have you ever seen a clip of of Mr. Ed? Yeah, it's fucking insane. Yeah, like they have him like maybe playing. Playing for the Cubs, like he's like up to bat. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've seen that. I don't think I've ever seen Mister Ed. It's just maybe a so insane clip or two. Yeah, Sean Bass once uh, showed me Mister Ed playing baseball. <laughs> he's like up at the plate. Yeah, and he's. I think he hits a home run. <laughs> <laughs> like how much acid <laughs> in like the sixties are those dudes? Like, what if shows were wild then? If you Very. go back and look at it. Yeah. Like, I Dream a Genie is pretty sweet. That's an insane concept. Also, she was so hot. Yeah. But I've grown, and I don't... Mm-hmm. That's not the first thing I think of anymore. Dominic Lombardozzi is 48. He's from The Wire. Uh, the, uh, he's, he's McNulty, right? No. No, oh, that's isn't Dominic it, West. Isn't it the fat, chubby, bald... White guy. Oh, okay. One of the cops. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's been in a bunch of... He's in... Was in Entourage also. I think you're right. And Big Sean is 36. Mm. Whew, rough weekend for him. Yeah. How come? Take me too long to explain, but we got a serious rap beef on our hands, Dan. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That somehow encompasses every single rapper you know. Uh, that the audience may know. I don't know that... It doesn't, in, it doesn't involve... Uh, Kanye? No, not Kanye cool or... Cool uh, the Gang, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Kanye or the Young guy MC. Who, who did Wild Thing. <laughs> What's to, uh, the guy you stole ketchup for, or is it stole ketchup for? Tone Loke. Tone Loke, okay. Yeah. I wouldn't call him a rapper. His so, music yeah. transcended... An artiste. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know Tone Loke? Uh, I know your story. You don't know anything? You've never heard Tone Loke? No. Okay, I'm write that down. I want to play you some Tone Loke tomorrow. Okay, he's not gonna, so I will. If what, are you hoping that I'd love it? Or... It's just iconic. I think you got to hear a little Tone Loke in your life. <laughs> I don't want you to... <laughs> <laughs> no one has ever said that. Uh, born on this day, they're not alive anymore. Uh, Howard Cosell... Uh, apparently Chief Kunkel, but I don't know when his, it's not his birthday, I don't think. And Jack Ruby. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Didn't expect to, that to bring the room down. Dead on this day, we have Larry McMurtry. Texas legend. Not like the G League team. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that would would have been funny, though. How's, is the G League disbanding? Ignite. Ignite and maybe the other one, yeah. We need to talk about that at some point. The ones where they're getting paid to not, you know, be affiliated with the team because now they're like, why don't I just go to college even if I didn't want to go to college and get some money. And uh, died on this day in 2022 at the age of 50. So I wonder how. But maybe you can tell me. Taylor Hawkins. I think they were... I think it was drugs, Drummer yeah. Of Foo but they were kind of like uh, weird about releasing any facts about that. That guy is awesome, and I don't even really like the Foo Fighters, but one of the best concerts I ever saw in my life on the beach on one of those trips we took. Is that the one where the son of the guy in the submarine went, and the guy died in the submarine, but he was at a concert? Oh. No, that was that was a Blink One Eighty Two concert. <laughs> okay, Man, you guys knew what I'm saying. We were so obsessed with that submarine for so long. <laughs> but the stun, the sun, whatever happened to yeah. him? Remember that was a nice five minutes of history. Wow. Yeah, and it turned out he was just like sending super creepy stuff to girls and online. Yeah, that was a fun time. All right. 
I sincerely hope my dad does not decide to explore the Titanic and lose Eric. And I will be in trouble. People start digging through me. So what a day this has been. Uh, let's thank uh, Benton for buying that transcript. Yeah. Of course. And Clay for being friends with the guy who bought that transcript. Yeah. We're going to clap for everybody. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, that's right. He had a gift for you. Give Clay up. has a gift. Give it up, give it up for corn. This is for you. Yeah, that is... This is uh, seventh grade? Eighth grade. This is his eighth grade... Uh, something like that. Yeah. So... They'll let you get away with just requesting any number you want. So in eighth grade, you thought 69 was funny. Yes. <laughs> and everybody's parents knew about it. They knew that we knew. <laughs> they knew that you knew. Yes. And so now the rest of your life, there's you. And you're giving me this photo, framed and everything. Wow. <laughs> 32 <laughs> cents, $1,700. That's right. <laughs> I have a, a picture of uh, Clay. Up to 69. That's true. Um, and then, of course, uh, we have uh, Aggie Ben. We have Aggie Ben here who paid half of 690 No one can figure out what that figure exactly is. Mm-mm. And uh, not Aggie, Matt. No, he's also Aggie. I mean, I he just, like you just didn't make it. Didn't, didn't You're on the Blake plan. Yeah. He just went for a little bit. Any uh, closing remarks? I don't like the political texts. I'm so tired of them. Well, you better get ready, bub. It's not even. Well, it's that's not even close, and it's like fifty oh, times a day. Okay, you don't mean Twitter. You just no, mean... just the random. Oh, Trump Nick, here. Nikki Haley here. Yeah, I'm getting slaughtered right now. This is the problem with voting. They should allow you to vote and register and vote in everything you want to vote in and have an option of, but don't text me. The more you vote, the more they text you. And God forbid you ever give a dollar, which I'll never do again. So you have donated to a political party. I have. I've donated to Bernie a couple times. And it's it was the worst decision I ever made in my life. I would pay them double what I donated to have them stop texting me which would be $50. I th- see I thought you were referring to Twitter because like they used to say at first when Elon bought it like it's changed and it sucks now. But I kind of feel like now it has changed a little more like I'm it just feels like all that politics stuff is right in my face and it's not reading my algorithm. Like I don't want to know all this stuff. I just want to know. Any closing remarks there Benton? Uh anyone else? Matt? Keep doing what you're doing, playboy. Okay. Well, I guess we will. Adios, mofo. Vaping has become a very big business, as I understand it. Like a giant business in a very short period of time. But we can't allow people to get sick, and we can't have our youth be so affected. And I'm hearing it, and that's how the first lady got involved. She's got a son together that is a a beautiful young man and she feels very very strongly about it especially vaping as it pertains to innocent children innocent children innocent children and they're coming home and they're saying Mom, I want to vape.